What's happening everyone? Welcome back to the channel, Scotty RFD as usual, here behind the mic, and today we've got a retro modern classic special, the beautiful 2022 Kawasaki Z650 RS. In the green pinstriped paint job. Powering this machine's a liquid cooled 649cc parallel twin engine. I'm making around 60 horsepower and not sure on the torque, but very peppy engine with the parallel twin. Overall design and look, I think it's a beautiful, beautiful bike. Uh, less complicated than you would think. Uh, I've got beautiful, beautiful 17 inch gold wheels, decent sized brakes up front, great color scheme. We can see we've got some analog gauges with a nice little LCD screen for the basics. And yeah, you know my theme here. Less talk, more riding. Okay, let's get into it, shall we? Okay, here we are. The 2022 Z650 RS. It's comfy. It's retro. Kawasaki calls this the retro evolution. <laughs> I'm not sure how to exactly pronounce that, but I think it's a clever title for this machine. Uh, this struck me as one of those bikes could be beginner, but also could be something as, you know, if you were more of a mature person and you used to ride and got out of riding, this could fulfill your need and get you back into the game. Uh, very easy bike to ride, very toned down and uh, good bang for the buck as that like always, we'll uh, start with the spec sheet and we'll work our way through as we go. Uh, apologies for the wind today. It is not giving me an inch. So hopefully that dies down as we move along here. So uh, we'll start up at the front. I've got 41 millimeter forks, uh, non-adjustable, I believe. Haven't seen anything on that to indicate they would be. Uh, in the back, we've got a classic Kawasaki horizontal backlink single shock suspension. I believe you can adjust the preload, but I don't think it's as easy as some of the other models. I've got to take one or two parts off and it's a bit of a job. So you kind of have to make a hard decision whether you're going to have two people or one person riding on this machine. Taking it back up front, we've got two 300 mil floating disc uh, strapped to those are two dual piston calipers. I believe they're Nissan. Uh, and as well in the back, we've got a 220 mil disc with a single piston caliper. Oh, turn the signal still on. Uh, moving up to the front again, and we've got sort of a higher set bars, but it makes the riding position ever so comfy. Uh, no complaints as far as that goes. Everything's nicely kind of spaced out within reach. Uh, we've got the kind of more classic analog gauges, which I uh, I always I always love a little classic touch of things. You know, even when cars, vehicles, they come with all those push button, you know, touch screens. Uh, it's nice to have a, a knob or you know some textile things to. I don't know, just make everything feely, feely goody. <laughs> as well, stripped of that, we've got an LCD screen. We've got just kind of basic information going across that. I know it might be hard to see through the right now with the sun, uh, but you've got your gear, gear indicator, fuel gauge, uh, temperature gauge, a clock, and the odometer. Uh, no riding modes or anything on this machine. Uh, like I kind of stated before, I like how on these retro bikes, and when the manufacturers don't exactly put you know tons of bells and whistles and things of that they just leave it kind of as is and uh, you know let the riding do the talking and you're you're more control you more um you know just have at it anyway anyway enough of that levers are adjustable from factory which is always a good thing i've always liked that when manufacturers set those on uh, i've adjusted them as far as i can go and there's still a bit of a reach but that's okay they're Better than they were, <laughs> that's for sure. Oh. 
And of course your switch gears, we've got your horn four ways, which is nice, turn signals, high beam, low beam, and your little adjuster here. Go through your trip A, trip B, liters per hundred, average liters, what's left in the tank, and back to your odometer. Over here you've got your uh, kill switch and starter switch as well. Throttle on this is a bit snappy. I would have thought it would have been a bit smoother. It's a slipper assist clutch, but it uh, took me by surprise a little bit. So be cautious if you're a beginner rider with this thing. It will kind of, you know, give you one of these shotguns to the chest once you take off if you get a little too much. Also, clutch engagement is nice about halfway through the, the lever, but also very sharp. I would say take it slow if you can. We've got a 12 liter fuel tank, which sounds small, but through my riding so far this week, it's been pretty good. I really have only gone through one bar out of, what are we, two, four, five bars of fuel, which is pretty good. And I rode all the way from Toronto back to the Hamilton Niagara region. Uh, so fueling management's very well. Tip top to Kawasaki there. A seat height, 800 mil seat height, uh, very easy to get on. Being the suspension with the preload, you can adjust it so it might sag a little bit more for some people than others, but uh, very uh, easy. I can put you know, both feet down uh, inseams, about a 30 inch inseam, so no worries there. And the seat itself, let me tell you, comfortable, comfortable. I haven't sat on a comfortable seat in a little while, and uh, I've ridden quite a few bikes. This seat, something about it just hugs it in a way where I feel like I could just sit on this for days. Uh, going down below, we've got 17 inch wheels, kind of a street sport tire on those. Uh, they do feel nice and grippy. You can throw the bike around. Uh, and throwing the bike around, that brings me to the weight uh, 187 kilograms. I think it's just about over 400 pounds. So definitely a nice lighter weight machine, which uh, helps a lot on your daily commutes. Uh, going back up, the mirrors work pretty well. I'm happy that, you know, Kawasaki didn't exactly make this a part spin. Uh, they gave it its own set of mirrors, uh, fitting the classic kind of retro styling. And they do the job. They're nice, poked out past my shoulders. Some people obviously will change those. Uh, I changed them on my Scrambler from Triumph. Uh, but just the way I wanted to go with that bike, but these do fit the the bill with the styling and everything They're well well put together and they do a really good job. Actually. I find uh, I'm not a bulky guy by any means, but um, Some bikes they hit the shoulders this one just nice sweet spot just past the shoulders and uh, In the back in the back view styling overall this bike uh, it's got the trellis frame. It's coming from the naked uh, Z650 I rode earlier. Uh, but it is overall, I think, a little more comfortable than that bike. I feel less vibration on this thing than I did on the Z650 naked model. Uh, I'm curious to wonder what they've done to change it up to make it better. Maybe it's the seat or the overall tuning of the engine. I'm not, I'm not sure. I thought they'd be the same. But uh, it just, it feels real good. I mean, comparing the two is difficult, obviously, because the naked bike looks cooler, looks more modern. If I were getting into the motorcycle scene, I'd probably head towards that. Look at this moped. Oh, yes. Everyone's so happy to be on a bike these days, waving it all. <laughs> but yeah, I think uh, younger me would have picked the naked. Older me, I think I would have uh, would have picked this little guy. Styling is good. I like the chrome accents, but I'm a bit in between because I've seen the black and silver model under this, the basic paint scream uh, for under ten thousand dollars, and I like how everything is blacked out. Everything, well, the engine casing, all that. This comes with a couple little little brushed aluminum features on it, uh, things of that. So it's a hard a hard one for me with the paint, I'm not sure. I might have to mix the two together and do a, a custom, custom a Z650 and just call it the R. <laughs> Could be something in the future, in the makes maybe? I'll have to wait and see.
engine braking quite noticeable on this, which is nice being a light bike. And the balance is really good too. You can uh, you can one stop this thing at a stop sign, keep everything up and right, and get going again. And it just muscles on. Being so fairly lightweight, it handles like a dream. It's got some go to it. What a surprising little. <laughs> I guess being a parallel trend, it's it's got some some umph in the tank that I wouldn't really expect about this, but yeah. <laughs> she goes goes a little. It's like the girth. I've gone down another bar in fuel. That explains that. <laughs> oh yeah. I can't get over how comfortable this machine is. Honestly, you're in a bit of a neutral position up top. It's upright. There's no windscreen or protection. You feel the wind, obviously, being a windy day. I can feel all of it. But at the same time, there's just effortless relief riding this thing. You're not really not going to get sore or tired. Me riding from Toronto back to this area, I had no, no cramps. There's no heat either. I was fairly surprised as I got a little bit of heat from the the naked Z650 but nothing to report of it yet and I, uh, I rode for quite some some hours so very happy about that six-speed transmission in this thing as well so you get nice cruising gears on the highway uh, I definitely think uh, my Triumph missed the boat on that giving it a five-speed uh, especially this day and age I really don't think anything should be a five-speed anymore we've come along far enough let's just put six gears in it and be done brakes feel good on this thing too having the dual piston calipers up front you're lots of stopping power nissan master cylinder up here cable with the uh, nissan brakes more than enough to to halt this thing to a stop Tapers off a little bit on the high end, but more than enough to get you up and running. My gosh. <laughs> Once it gets into the higher RPMs, it, it does sound a lot better. I do wish the bars were maybe a little bit longer. I find myself actually going over here, grabbing on. It's nice that Kawasaki has many types of motorcycles in their, their fleet lineup because if you're in love with a brand, they make it easy. You could just go up and up as you move on in your riding career. You know, you start out with something basic like this, move up to a 900, and so on and so on. They've kind of got every bike to fit one's bill. And I, I do appreciate that from, from Kawasaki. So pull over a little bit and we'll go through boom, blah, 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 a couple of things. Is it every day someone's moving into a new house? Comment down below if you know what movie that's from. A Christmas classic, and I'll leave it at that. <laughs> Over here. Look good. There's our herd of cruisers. Not sure what's happening here. They say I'm lost. Yeah, we're, we're discussing directions right now. All right people of YouTube, bike channels, and enthusiasts, just look at the seat. This is, we got some nice cutouts here, strap for your pillion to be on. I will say it's not a generous amount of seat for the passenger. Um, the short tailed bike styling of it looks really well. Functionality, hard to say, but overall, digging it, digging it. And like we've got down here, we've got the helmet lock, one of my favorites. What's happening? <laughs> Lucas. Lucas, yeah, nice to meet you, man. Yeah. Anyway, I'll let you get back to it <laughs> for sure. Appreciate you stopping. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cool. What a friendly guy. Always nice when fellow motorcyclists swing by. See if you're all right, checking up on them. It's like everyone's got each other's back, which is a good, good thing. Back to this thing. <laughs> so. Coming back here as my favorite, we got our helmet lock. 
I need to pick one of those up, I swear. I've, uh, had so many times I've wanted to at least leave my helmet on my bike, and I can't, because the obvious. I said leave it on the bar, hope for the best. We've got cast wheels. Oh, it's kind of cool. I didn't know these are hollowed out inside. Very neat. We got some weight savings that uh, definitely appears to be on both. I don't know if you can see that. Look at that. They're all hollow inside. Very cool, very cool. I definitely don't want to clean these on a daily basis. No, thank you. But yeah, obviously our retro styling, we got the green, not beautiful pinstriping across our classic badging of the Z650. A couple, you know, brushed aluminum pieces that look really well. As I said before, the black and the silver model, everything is blacked out through the engine. Even on my Triumph, I've taken some of these pieces off and just powder coated them because I just wanted it all, you know, the styling to be all black and a little splash of color up top. Nevertheless, I think it's a great looking bike. We've got more to the front here, single classic LED headlight. Looking very sharp, a little chrome around it. And we've got the chrome tubes for the shocks. Definitely fits the bill for, for this machine. Our nice black trellis frame and our exhaust very much exposed. Where does that go? Look at that thing, that kind of, oh, that's why. Maybe that's why it sounds like a, like a washing machine. Somewhat that is a massive cat on the bottom there. Oh, I've got a nice cushy passenger foot pegs Slide on back here. Nice little guard for your foot. And as always we've got our beautiful beautiful license plate bracket tail Section, I think it would look really oh look at that. This is open. Whoops Oh look at that a secret door Oh, I found it <laughs> Very cool. That's like a little Easter egg right there. That's for the seat it is too. I don't know if you can see that folks, but key slot up there. Flap, rubber flap. Hopefully that stays up there. I'd be ashamed to get grime or dirt or rot and that. Interesting, interesting. And I've tried to see where to adjust this preload, but I think I read somewhere it's it's way up in there. I'm not sure. I can't even see it from here. I'm not gonna dabble in that boy is anything but yeah here she is folks 2022 Kawasaki Z650 RS in the flesh great all-round bike for the potential beginner or the returning seasoned vet that wants to get back on the two wheels and explore his unknowns let's get up here turn it on and see an exhaust note there you've got all your functions. I don't know if people can see that or not. Fire up right now. <laughs> Definitely got some <laughs> some deca 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 dirt bike esque in it. <laughs> Please be sure to like and subscribe to the videos. We've got more coming out, more reviews to do, and uh, let's hope this journey keeps on going. Thanks for tuning in again, and uh, appreciate everyone's feedback in the comments. Like and subscribe again, and we'll definitely see you in the next one. Thanks again, everyone. Cheers. Bye.